Hello and good morning everyone. I wish you a great start into this Friday morning. I hope you're looking forward for the weekend. I definitely do. <laughs> but first and foremost, let's get this day started well. I would like to talk about love as, as, is, as it is this year's topic, the constant topic. But before we get into the topic of love more deeply, let me just quickly put you or bring you into my classroom from last week. Last week in my 10th grade, we were discussing the nuclear fusion energy. And nuclear fusion is a principle where you combine two cores of an atom. So just for those who, who don't consider themselves being scientists, just a short, short um, resume here. Usually you teach kids in school that this whole world consists of little elementary units and we call them the atoms. And atoms, again, consist of a hard, massive core. And this is a binding, a strong binding of protons. Now, if you have two atoms and you combine their cores together, a new core is created by which we also have created a new atom. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because there's two fun facts about the so-called nuclear fusion. That's what the process is called. The first fun fact is those nuclei, they would never combine voluntarily. They would never have the idea to just happen to become one core. It takes a lot, like it takes super, super high pressure. Pressures this world has hardly seen. It also takes very high temperature, incredibly high temperature for those cores to really bring them close together in order to combine them. Temperatures this world, again, has hardly seen. Why am I telling you this again? Because we still do have such temperatures in the universe. The sun, for example. The sun is hot enough and has the sufficient pressure in order for those nuclei to getting, to getting combined. And the sun actually lives out of those nuclear fusions. It's regenerating um, nuclei the whole time. And this is what we call the nuclear fusion. The second fun fact is, although those nuclei would never combine by itself, if it happens, there is a really, really strong force involved, a strong binding after it. They like super strongly bound. And while getting connected, a lot of energy is being set free. That's a huge benefit for such cores. They, they release a lot of energy. The energy of the sun, again, which we receive daily. Day in, day out, we receive or we benefit of the energy um, that is getting released if two nuclei are getting combined. That shall be it for today from the scientific perspective. It's just necessary to get my point today. So th this whole nuclear fusion, which we were discussing last week, um, the idea is, hey, there's so much energy being released. Just imagine if you have the small potato, which consists of atoms, which again consists of many atomic nuclei. If you would just think of theoretically combining those cores together, those nuclei together, um, the amount of energy would be released that would be sufficient to provide all Germany for one whole year of electric power. This much power is in such a small potato sized amount of nuclei, which is amazing. It really amazes me. And yet those cores really don't want to get bound at first. Now follow me along because the idea I want to bring is that isn't fascinating that this whole world consists of atoms which have to be strongly bound to each other. The whole world consists of sort of atomic bindings in every type, like the strong force, core bindings, the electron bindings. And then after lots and lots of processes of strong bindings, those atoms have to pass through this pretty phase occurs, which is the end result of all of this. And I'm glad of those strong bindings. And even our dear Lord and Savior wants us to be strongly connected to each other. That's that's a basic principle of the kingdom of God. And he wants us to be strongly bound. And here's the fun fact. We really don't volunteer usually. Because 
my brethren in, in Christ, they are, <laughs> they can be exhausting. They talk too much, they talk too less. They shower too less, they shower too much. They're too pretty, they're too ugly, they're too complicated, they're too simple. Like it's for us, it's exhausting to getting connected with people. We rather would prefer just Jesus and me alone and everything is perfect. So let us just quickly analyze what type of binding the Lord is talking about when he says he wants us to be strongly bound together. And secondly, let us also have a closer look on what the benefits are. Like as we are benefiting of all those bindings here in the world and the energy sun and everything, what is the benefit of being bound to my Christian family in Christ, the church? So, and herefore, let's jump into Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Paul writes to his brethren in faith in Christ, and he starts this chapter by saying, For I want you to know how great struggle I have for you. Verse 2. For my hope is that their hearts may be encouraged as they are knit together in love. So the type of binding Paul is so hardly struggling for or wrestling for is that Christianity would be bound in love together. That's the strong force binding that should be in between you and me. This is the sort of binding that connects us so that we're knit together in love so that they may have all the riches that come from the full assurance of understanding resulting in a true knowledge of the mystery of God that is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So Paul explains, he, he, he wrestles hard, he fights for it, he has a great struggle for us in prayer that, that we would be bound together, knit together in love. Why? Because, now he explains it, because then we have all the riches and the revelation of Christ Jesus himself. Let me just put this into a picture. Let's just say I'm knit together with someone else in love. And the interesting thing and the big benefit of this is that now Christ is being revealed. Can you see it? This heart now wears a crown. So in between me and my neighbor, in the middle, like right in the middle where the love is connecting us, right in this connection, Christ is getting revealed. We can see Christ in this connection of love between amongst each other. And this is actually really important to understand. That's how the whole um, picture of church actually works. The whole idea of church is that we are connected in love so that Christ can be revealed. And not just Christ can be revealed in this connection, but also through Christ, both of us experience, let me cite it, all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Do you see now this heart even contains diamonds and this treasure in here? So if I'm strongly connected to my neighbor in love, then we don't just see Christ in our midst, but we also um, can dive into Christ and get all those hidden treasures and let me really emphasize usually God is a mystery and it says the moment we are bound in love that's how you can access the mystery of God to see Jesus so let me put this together first of all we should fight for this binding this strong connection with my neighbor we should really fight for it I mean just think about it Paul sitting in prisons getting tortured suffering from starvation everything this is nothing he ever considered to be a strong battle. But now when it comes to the love for our neighbor, he says, oh, I have a great struggle. So I think this is really an urgent, urgent issue we should prioritize. So let's fight for the binding in love. 
Let's be knit together in love. That's the type of binding we have. We don't have soulish bindings. We don't have any dependencies on each other, um, but we, we really owe each other to love each other. That's, that's um, requested from our Lord in heaven. And the third thing is, the benefit is that we have the full knowledge in Christ the moment we love each other, which is really interesting. Have you ever thought about it? That it's actually a principle we all know and we keep citing it day in, day out. We say in Matthew 18, 20, for example, let me just name a few. There we say, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The interesting thing is he is among them. It's, it's in between this relationship. It's in between the binding where Jesus himself will be available. And then also in 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, there it says, no one has seen God at any time. But then all of a sudden it jumps from the content from no one has seen God. It all of a sudden goes on. But if we love another, God abides in us, like the us is the connection between each other. God abides in us and his love is completed and perfected in us. It's not I, me, mine in the kingdom of God. Through love, it's us. Christ is being revealed in us. He is gathered where two or three people are gathered in his name. This is where we can find Jesus. And this is why the Bible also says, by the love amongst each other, the world will find Christ. They will come to see Christ. That's such a powerful principle that we really should establish in our life. Let me just make um, a last quick example of how ex I experienced this strong binding. First, remember, sometimes it's a great struggle. And even for me, sometimes it's a great struggle, but I know the worth. I know the worth of the strong binding being bound to each and every one in Christ. So there was this one person in my life, which I thought at this point of time, that several things occurred and I thought, okay, you know what? That's it. We are done. We are definitely done. It's just, I, you know, I just wrapped it in a bit more Christianized saying. I said, you know, I think just the Lord, we have different callings and I think it's better to step aside. And I mean, I don't really have to work with you. I don't have to bear with you. Just peace be with you. Mwah, bye. See you. That was basically my idea of we are done. I don't want to work with you. You're exhausting. You're way too overdramatized. You're way too this and that. And I really, really dislike you. And let me tell you, this is just a few handful of people in my life where I can really say that. So this was pretty intense. But then again, I remembered this verse and I thought, okay, first of all, let's fight for the love. Even if we don't feel like it, my God requires me or requests me to fight for the love. So... I prayed, Lord, give me some love for this person because I really strongly need it. I can't get it on my own. I talked to friends. I asked for advice. And finally, finally, there was this slight idea that God wanted me to talk to this person. And he said, but before you talk to this person, go to a store. And so I thought, okay, because I desperately need love for this person. And if this is the key God gives me, I will be obedient. So just shortly before we were about to talk, I went to a specific store. And then the Lord said, now go to this direction and this and grab the thing you see, bring it um, to the payment area and pay for it and give it to this person, hand it over to this person as a gift. And I thought like, Okay, well, if, if that should really do the deal because I still don't love this person. I really, far away, too exhausted. Um, so I, I was just obedient. I took this, this thing. I went um, to pay for it. And even the moment I put it on, on this black band where, where you're about to pay in a few minutes, nothing happened. My heart was still the same. I was so mad. I was so frustrated. I was so upset at some point of time and still I was waiting for this big fire of God coming inside of me to get love for this person and the moment I pulled my cash card through this this paying thing the moment I pulled it through 
whoosh, the love of God came in such an intense way for this, for, for this person. I could have cried for hours. I thought, God, this person is so precious. This person is so loved. I know you would return back to earth just for this person. You have put so much purpose in this person. And even if this person takes the present and just throws it into my face, I would still have so much love left over. Like the, the, the love of God was really pouring out of my heart. And this was so so crucial because for the next years we would surf together we would work together and um, there was so much healing in between this and let me tell you we've never been like the closest friends afterwards but i can tell you one thing our connection was the pure love of god it was pure in heart it was strong it was heavenly and it was really really important for both of us and i came to see Christ in this. I, 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 the first, that was the first time I experienced such a strong love of God in an amazing way, knowing that he can do the impossible, really can do the impossible. And just um, regarding time, just, but I really feel I should encourage you again. Let me just bring a short second example for you, because I think the application is the thing that we're struggling most with, right? So let's put it into a bigger context again. When I came to this church, no, second example. When I came to this church, I was put into a Familienkreis, which, we, which is the German word for us here for the cell groups. So I was put into a cell group consisting just of women. And you have to know, I came from a super male background. I was studying physics. I was in the technical directions. And I loved the way um, all the men around me communicated. It was simple. It was straightforward. It was easy going. Um, feed, the feedback culture was super easy. But when I got into this Familienkreis, it was sort of like a cultural shock for me. It was super, super emotional. And most of the people were crying because of out of joy or out of frustration. I couldn't even name it. I was totally overwhelmed. I was sitting there. I wasn't understanding anything. For me, it was a waste of time. And it really frustrated me because I thought oh, we could have done so much good things, but we were just kept talking about things that doesn't matter that don't matter to me I don't want to be here it's exhausting because you talk too much you talk too less you're too emotional you're too less emotional I can't talk to you openly la 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 la, la. so like there were so many issues it, it took me a lot a lot to go there and so I was praying said Lord it's your will to getting connected to cell group to build your kingdom together and this is where my pastors have put me so help me to be obedient help me to get a love for those people because love covers a lot of sin and I need this love in order to not see all where we are lacking at but rather to see the potential you have put into us please Lord show me the purpose of this strong connection and give it to me so I was fighting for a day in day out for almost half a year and then there was this one moment where it was like super exhausting I came home and the whole day I thought like I can't wait to get home to be alone again and just get all my emotions resettled back just Jesus in me but still I was obedient I went there but I was glad when I came home I returned home and because I was so done and so exhausted the only thing I could do at night was going into my living room sitting at the sofa and calm down and the moment I calmed down I began to miss them I was sitting there and I knew that was the moment the Lord has given me a love I can reproduce I was literally missing them I thought oh when will I see them again wait a second I was just waiting all day long to get like away from there and now God has put this strong love in my heart and I was counting the days until I saw them again but it was a wrestle it was a fight but then the love came and guess what now that I'm living the us now that I'm strongly connected with them I came to meet Christ in such an amazing way man I have the best leaders I really can tell you this is a pure um, an honest statement, I have the best Familiengruppen leaders you can ever imagine. They are so wise. They are not emotional at all, by the way. <laughs> and they support me in such a strong way. I can support them. I got a new revelation of heavenly time management. And man, I can tell you, I got a new revelation of Jesus Christ as the personified grace 
for each other, which I definitely lacked. I learned how to pray. I learned how to be quick in forgiveness. All of these things, like Christ, was manifested in this us connection between me and all these wonderful women of God in this family in Christ. And so this is what I pray for today. Lord, we want to be obedient. We love you. And if you say that we shall be connected, there is a deeper purpose. And as this world is bound together and follows your word, we want to be unified and knit together in your godly love. Lord, wherever we can't love each other, wherever we pass out to, or fail to love each other, I ask you for a new love poured out into our hearts, for a new revelation of who you are. Lord, I ask you that you would knit us together, that you would unify us as the body of Christ here in the CBG. I, I call out new friendships. I call out forgiveness. I call out the love of God. I proclaim the love of God over our church. And Lord, thank you. We want to do this not out, out of our own strength or just out of pure stupidity, but we do this because we know the, the reward is that we can expect you, Jesus Christ, the personified, manifested glory of God amongst us. Lord, we really expect you to be found in the us, in the connection between us, Lord, in the middle of our gatherings, in the middle of our friendships, in the middle of our strong bindings. Lord, I praise you. Thank you for everything you've done in my life. Thank you for everything you will do in this week. I bless each and everyone. Amen.